Hi, this is uh, Simon from Fingers on Plastic, and it's time to talk about Transformers Earthrise. Um, I'm torn. I can't lie. I'm really, really torn. Because the bits I liked, I really, really liked. The bits I didn't like, they sucked. They sucked hard. So... I watched, I've watched, I've been through it twice now. I was going to record a video after my first viewing, and I didn't, so I've been through the whole thing twice. Um, first time I watched it was with Grace, which was quite interesting, and in some cases quite funny. And the second time I watched it was on my own, and I want to go and watch it with Paddy, but the little bug has moved to Scotland. Because um, we did that thing uh, on the last on Siege where we watched an episode and then spoke about each episode afterwards. So I, I hope we can do that again soon because I don't know when that will be. But anyway, I've watched it twice. <laughs> it's really tricky. Right, so let's get let's get my two big negatives out of the way. Right, let's just let's get them done, addressed, and move on. The voice acting is so stunted. I, I couldn't stand the voice acting. I'm sorry, I just, I'm sure they're nice people, it's awful. And you know, Bumblebees was all right when he didn't um, have to follow Optimus. So here, here's a clip. Station end up in that space bridge. Teletran 1, full report. 42% of Nebulon Station has traveled through the Space Bridge. 58% remains in this region of space. Are there life signs? Negative. Do you detect Energon? Trace amounts of Energon are detected. There's no way we're getting through the Space Bridge with that thing in the way. Um... I mean, it's been described as low energy voice acting. <laughs> it's just rubbish. I'm sorry, it's just really, really rubbish. Um, awful, really. And it really took me out of the moment at times as well, because it's what, about, there's about three hours of it, isn't there? About three hours. And I reckon they could probably, if people spoke normally, um, they could probably get it down to about two and a half hours. I reckon they could cut that much out by just talking at a regular pace or normally and not having to be so dramatic all the time. It, 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 it got old really fast in the first episode and, and Grace even asked, so my six-year-old daughter said, why are they talking so slowly? Um, so there was that, that, that was a, I mean, and that, that really hit it hard for me, that, to be honest. It really, it pulled me out of the enjoyment uh, and really, really mullered the show, as far as I'm concerned. My second dislike was the, um, the character progression and basically everything to do with Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime is one of my absolute all-time favourite characters. I don't care what people say. He just always, always has been. He's a heroic, good guy slash murderer in the movies. But he's always been focused. Uh, and I know there's the you know a leader coming into his own aspect, but I'm sorry, no, he's just a tit in this. So um, uh, <laughs> and the voice acting made it worse because the voice actor just sort of. When he was angry, he was just sort of shouting, but not in the same voice. It, it, it awful. So I made one note as the um, Optimus gets angry, you know, when he's killing Megatron. Um, so they're having this fight about around the Scorpionok episode. So they're having this fight, and then he gets distracted by a knocking noise, and Megatron's like, "It's the uh, some background stuff turning back on," and he's like. Oh. And then he just decides, because Megatron's pointed out, that he's not going to kill him. And then tells Megatron that Megatron should have killed Prime, but he needs him. And it's just like, what? <laughs> yeah, okay, fine, whatever. Then he suggests they work together, 
which I was like, okay, yeah, they, they've worked together every, a couple of times, and it's, you know, a great example of them working together. Transformers Prime, you know, when they go into Unicron, and, you know, they've got each other's backs and all that. It's brilliant. In this, I mean, Prime gets uh, Megatron patched up by Wheeljerk. Prime's about to get stabbed by Scorponok's tail, and Megatron saves him. And then immediately turns on him. I mean, immediately. No guy, you know, Scorponok's knocked over. They've not even dealt with him. And he's already turned on Prime, saying, I want to kill you. Your sentence is death. Because they didn't deal with Scorponok, uh, Prime and co. get away. And Prime says that he's... Um, he thinks he was foolish to think that Megatron would change. So he actually says he thinks that he was foolish to think that Megatron was changed and giving him a chance was a mistake. So then it comes to the next fight where Prime again, he gets the upper hand, which is cool. Then starts begging for forgiveness. Please forgive me, please forgive me. Why? Because he feels bad that he's gonna have to op him. And then Cog comes out of nowhere and distracts him and Megatron just beats him, just like whips him like an old, oh, just really mullers him and takes the Matrix and is about to kill him with no messing around and Bumblebee saves him. I just think Prime looked like a fool during all of that and dwelling on his self-doubt, you know, again, you know, did he make a mistake with the Allspark washing it off and all that? Yeah, I, I could have dealt with that having you know thoughts about what he'd done but he just came off like a I mean it wasn't very Optimus but conversely what I did find interesting was Elita One's character arc so I want to move into the uh, see that segue moving into the things I like now I liked Elita One and I didn't much like her in the first one Siege but uh, I did like her in this I thought she was more Optimus Prime-like than Optimus was because she saves Decepticons at the start and then goes back and then tries to help people. I just thought, yeah, there she, she's being a good leader. Doesn't work out too well for her at the end, but we shall see. I mean, you don't see her get blown up, so there's a chance she might be back, but it's, it didn't, I'd, I'd be interested if she did manage to get away from that explosion. Um, there was some much needed humour in this. As a, about once an episode, I found myself chuckling, especially one of the one where it's like, um, what did he say? Something about uh, a back. You're not the one wearing an. Ex you're not the one wearing an explosive backpack made by Wheeljack. That tickled me. I liked that line. Uh, really good. I thought Starscream being Starscream was awesome. Just brilliant. Uh, turning on Megatron and then Megatron coming back and then. Whilst Starscream stating his case, Megatron just shoots him. Uh, that I thought that was hilarious. I thought that's brilliant. Uh, that, that was absolutely spot on. Loved it. Galvatron, from his entrance to his ex exit, perfect. I do have one question. Where's his cannon? What was going on with his cannon? He sort of appears and he's got no cannon and then all of a sudden he's got a cannon. Is it supposed to be he just thought himself up a cannon? I, I, I didn't, that wasn't particularly clear. But other than that, I thought it was great. I really liked him being there. I like what you're saying. I was like him being a slave to his timeline. Uh, are we gonna get hints of, you know, can we get a little dripping of Target 2006 where he's traveling around in time to try and sort things out? Um, to be honest, I don't know squat about the golden disc, but apparently that's quite a thing. And obviously he gives Megatron the golden disc. So Megatron's now at the end of that. He's got the golden disc and the Matrix, which could be interesting. But I loved Galvatron being in it. I, I thought that was great. And I think he looked great as well. It would be really, really interesting to see what the, uh, the toy looks like. Because if the toy looks like that, it's going to be stonking. Um, it needs to be about the same height as Megatron. Yeah, big fan, big fan of that. I like Unicron's cameo. 
very sort of sucky teaser. I was all right with Skylinks. I know some people didn't like Skylinks. I thought, yeah, it worked. They had to, you know, they wanted to shoehorn him in. He's got an action figure, why not? Uh, could there have been better characters for that sort of thing? Maybe. Um, oh, crikey. I've forgotten his name. You know the guy that sends Springer uh, and Impactor into Operation Volcano without Magnus? Him. His name has literally fallen out of my brain. Maybe he could have taken that role. But in either way, Skylinks was fine. Uh, I really enjoyed Megatron's story arc. I liked him going from you know, visiting the uh, Area 12, Section 12, and then treating him like a celebrity, and then he's like, oh, it's great. And then him seeing the door with like 92% of them being knackered, he's just like, yeah, switch it off. And then his growing, you know, where he's got a little bit of doubt about that, when he finds Primes alive, he's just like, yeah, get everyone in, suck them up, let's get the nemesis going. So, yeah, I was a really big fan of that. Uh, I, yeah, I enjoyed that a lot. I liked Wheeljack, I liked Bumblebee. Um, wouldn't have minded a bit more Ironhide. I like, I think Cog was great again, but again, I don't think we'll be seeing him in the third season. So, you know, there was so much good, and I, I liked the story. I liked Scorponok, and I liked the tie-ins to Nebulon, and, and little things like that. I like the Quintesson, De Deci Des Decius. I liked, you know, because they were constant arguing, she just carves off the other heads. I thought that was great. I really liked all of that, and it looks like they're a ginormous threat all around. So I, I thought all of that was really, really good. Uh, and I liked, you know, it, it could have been a movie if they'd have spoken properly instead of six half hour episodes talking really slowly. Uh, you know, they go from here to do this and then they discover it. It works as a, it's got a flow of a movie and I liked that. It worked. Um, who else? What else was there? The mercenary fact. It was funny when um, X and Ferris did her bug bite review. She's like, what faction is this? Because he's got the, the mercenary faction. So I like that that was answered. Although I think that was answered in the trailer. Um, so again, there's, there's, there was a lot to like, a lot to like. I'll come to the ending, don't we? For those still watching. <laughs> um, let's have a think, what else was going on? I liked Shockwave. Shockwave was starting to come into his own as the mad scientist as well with a bit more time. So that was cool. I'm not a massive fan of the bad guys getting cloaking technology. I, I, feels a bit cheap, but it's Shockwave and he is a mad scientist and I liked him coming up with the idea to drain the Decepticons to power the Nemesis ship. Uh, I'm going to get, because obviously we weren't directly told, I'm going to guess that the Nemesis ship's been around for a while, it's just not had the power and hence the Nemesis, you know, Project Nemesis was to actually power it, not so much build it because it just came out of nowhere quite quickly. And it, it wasn't very clear how much time has passed between the end of Siege and the beginning of Earthrise. It, 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 did it say, did I miss that? Because I don't think I did. And if it was a long time, then fine, because they all assumed that the um, all Spark and Prime and all that was destroyed. So maybe there was lots of time in that and it's been worked on, but it, it wasn't clear, which was a bit sketchy storytelling wise. Uh, Astro Train got his last episode cameo, so in the last episode of Siege, he sort of popped up and, you know, walked along looking menacing, and then this, he pops up because he's been, um, held, held to account so that Wheeljack can shoot the mercenary ship. This time he's regular size, because at the end of Siege he was a giant, so... I don't think anyone's got any idea what they're doing with Astro Train, but whatever. We need to talk about character models. Um, awkward. So that everyone looks exactly the same as they did in Siege. 
There was no progression at all. And not only that, the, the, one, the only thing that really bugged me was I was fine with it because it actually made sense because they hadn't got to Earth yet. And it looks like they're in prehistoric Earth anyway, so it's just Hasbro getting the Wonga. Um, one thing that got me was the Quintesson had Decepticon clone soldiers like everybody else. Why didn't he have the Alicons? That would have made much more sense. So yeah, a really, really mixed bag. So what I did is I put a poll on a very small site, not the Fingers on Plastic site, which I probably should have done thinking about it. It was like this authorized discussion site that I put the, uh, a little poll up. So as you can see, overall people liked it. So again, cause, because there was a lot to like. But do you know what would be really cool? I'd love to see a fan edit. I haven't got the time or the patience or the skill needed. But imagine if someone did a fan edit. So you get all the six episodes, chop them up, redub. So you could use maybe some voices from Transformers Prime. You use voices from the video games, War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron and Rise of the Dark Spot. You can, there's, a lot, there's a whole host of voice stuff there that could fill this and make just a movie fan version. And I reckon it'd be cracking. I reckon it'd be really good. Because like I said, I think there's a lot to like. But that's just my crikey, like 15, 16 minute opinion. Sorry. What did you think of it? Right, so Earthrise. Mm. Yeah. I want to like it. I really do. Uh, in the same way that I really wanted to like Siege, but uh, it just has too many issues. Um, okay, so things I don't care for. I don't like the voice acting. Um, I don't care very much for any of the voice actors except for the guy who does Starscream, Bumblebee, and the woman who does Elita One. I think those voice performances are okay. You know, they're pretty good. Um, everyone else, I don't really care for. The Megatron one is alright-ish, but he talks too slowly. The chap who does Prime is just awful. I don't know where they found him, but he's just terrible. The rest of the voice performances are mediocre at best, so I don't care for that. Um, I think the whole thing is too slow. It just there's no flow with it it just sort of rambles along pretty much like me doing a review <laughs> but it's just it it doesn't seem to be any real sort of flow with it it doesn't it, it's just, just something about it it just sort of plods along and it's just tedious i don't like the pacing I know um, I saw Comedin Cam talk about this and he said that he ran his through at 1.5% speed or 1. no 1.5 times the speed sorry uh, and he said that the pacing was better but it's still yeah I, I, I don't want to do that I don't really want to run it through at that speed it would just be daft um, so yeah don't care for the pacing I'm okay with the art style. I do quite like the art style. Um, that's all right. I mean, it's the same art style as Siege anyway, so, you know, they're consistent there. Uh, I didn't care for Megazarek slash Scorponox character. Why was he so small? He was tiny. What was going on there? I mean, Megazarek is supposed to be the same size as Fortress Maximus. So, I don't understand why he was so small. Um, that sort of size looks to be more in line with the, um, what was he in, Superlink. That Scorponox size, that seems to be, you know, where they were going with that. Um, and I, I didn't like the fact that he wasn't very bright either. It seemed to be clomping around quite a lot, like Menosaur or Devastator in combined mode, you know. Or Bruticus, I suppose, would be more of a comparison just you know it's just really dumb um and if you've ever seen the headmasters megazoric isn't dumb so didn't care for that um <clears throat> i didn't like the way they handled skylinks 
Skylynx is one of my favourite G1 characters, and although I will agree that he is really arrogant, he he's not nasty, uh, and I, I didn't like that. On that scene, actually, um, did anybody else get a Tony Todd vibe from the guy doing the voice of um, Alpha Trion? Because that didn't half sound like Tony Todd. <laughs> I've not looked it up, actually. I've just remembered it. Uh, but, yeah. So, yeah, I wasn't keen on that. Uh, things I did like. Um, I loved the inclusion of Galvatron. I, I got so excited when I saw Galvatron. And in that, like, 1986 movie background as well, you know, where, where Megatron gets turned into Galvatron. That was fantastic. I loved that. Uh, if if we'd had more like that, then yeah, I would have been so much more excited. Um, I liked Dinobot's little cameo right at the end. And I even said to the guys that I thought that his was the best performance in the whole three, uh, six episodes. I know, I'm just being a bit daft, but yeah, I, seeing Dinobot, amazing. I, I want to say I cannot wait for the Kingdom portion. But I'm slightly concerned that it's going to be very much like Earthrise and it's ever so slightly pointless. Because there were six episodes of what was supposed to be Earthrise and they only rocked up at Earth in the second to last episode. And then just there was no rising. Where was the rising of the Earth? Um, yeah, I, I, I just feel like it was... It could have been done so much better. It felt like a wasted opportunity to me. So, yeah. I would really enjoy it if the pacing was faster, the voice acting was better, and they didn't treat G1 characters the way they've been treating them. So, yeah. So, hopefully Kingdom will be better. Please, fingers crossed. So, we'll see how that goes. So, that's my thoughts on Earthrise. Bye! Optimus Prime here. Just a few thoughts on Netflix's uh, Earthrise TV show. Um, very quickly, uh, what I liked, I very, very much enjoyed um, a couple of the episodes in particular. Um, the uh, Transformers the Movie-esque episode where you met Galvatron and was set almost entirely within the Dead Universe, so a bit of a callback to IDW and I think there's a bit of a Dead Universe in the Marvel comics, but I'm possibly wrong, my memory is definitely fuzzy on that. Um, I really liked that episode, uh, I loved all the stuff with Galvatron, um, I loved the uh, appearance of Unicron and I loved Prime's uh, little uh, little vision where he got to see himself dying um, as Optimus Prime only can. Um, I also really liked his little vision showing him falling down the dark path and becoming Nemesis Prime. Um, so that's that was fun. Um, things I also hated about that episode in particular were uh, Skylinks almost entirely um, I love Skylinks. Skylinks is a fun, fun character. I really love the figure. The Earthrise figure is one of my absolute favourites of recent Transformers toys. Um, see my review. Um, that was cool. His character was handled poorly. Um, they gave him a really weird sort of, like, uh, I don't even know what they were going for with him. They sort of made him like this sort of antagonist uh, yeah blah. anyway bad um so yeah that was that episode other than that the story kind of follows as you'd expect they're off floating around in space um megatron's finding a way to stop them with the inevitable construction of the nemesis which appears from more or less nowhere fueled by the sparks of cybertronians or something um there's lots of energon siphoning and people being stoic and shouting and shooting and all all of that however um overall yeah it's earth rising name only because they get to earth literally in the final shots of the final episode so i guess that's the rise part of earth rise um 
so yep yeah, it was fun to see uh the golden disc it was fun to see dinobot at the end um it was fun to see some of the characters that hadn't turned up before like double dealer and bug bite um that was fun scorponok was ass. i really liked how he looked i really liked him being a big ass badass i wasn't a big fan of what they did with his character basically shouting about infections and uh him being the last of the scorponox thus implying there's a whole race of scorponox not sure that was a thing before but hey maybe i'm wrong um overall yeah it's a good continuation of the first season it's a fun little show i like it as a nice update of uh g1 i suppose but incorporating elements from lots of other aspects of transformers such as beast wars obviously uh some of the idw stuff um it's also incorporating a few things in from favors even with the ejecting of the all spark into space so that's all cool um something for everyone i feel except for the voices which are awful i know everybody knows why the voices are as they are but ooh. Uh, somebody posted on Facebook recently that if you watch it at point, uh, sorry, at 75% speed, so 25% slower, uh, faster than it should be, is that right? I can't remember. Um, then the voices sound right. Uh, yeah. It, it's just too slow. Everything just said so purposefully and slowly each episode would be about 12 minutes if they actually spoke at a normal pace um but yeah quibbles aside it looks good um it's a little bit repetitive with the copy and paste uh um, bots that aren't the main characters it was nice to see some new characters yeah i'm looking forward to kingdom see what they do there they have to ha incorporate some more new characters in that it'll be fun and that's pretty much all I've got to say on that for now. I thought I would stand up and hold my camera today so you can see a different view. Anyway, Earthrise. Watch it. It's great-ish. So you can see, he's got some views too. So that's what two of us thought of Earthrise. What did you think? Let us know in the comments or do a reply video or whatever. But that's about it from me. Thank you very much. Fingers on plastic.